nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. You guys absolutely love this series. I didn't expect this much of a positive feedback when I started this series off, but I'm, I'm glad you guys like it because I absolutely adore analyzing graffiti. And actually delving into the deeper science behind graffiti happens to be my favorite part of graffiti nowadays. And also, I'm just a big fan of some of these people, so, you know, being able to actually take a minute to appreciate the amazing stuff they do is a lot of fun. So today, we'll be breaking down the graffiti of does. With a unique style and a really, really good understanding of not only colors, but values as well, they're able to bring their letters to life really, really effortlessly. And really, honestly, that can be its own analysis completely onto itself, is the fact that they have such a good understanding of how color and value works. This is for anybody who's a little bit newer to graffiti, is gonna be pretty much how you make your pieces pop. Now on this first piece, we can see them actually do this, and they actually use a really advanced technique where you can go ahead and make a focal point out of one of your letters. And we can see them do this on their O. If we look at just the base structure of the O here, it's not really all that big, and it doesn't have a lot of weight. What gives the O all of its weight is the fact that it's a completely different color than everything else. It has a high amount of contrast because of this, and as a result, your attention immediately goes to that section. One of the factors of visual weight is how much attention something receives, which as we can tell, the O gets a lot of attention. Now, the top portion of this O is incorporated on there specifically for negative space management purposes. That's there in order to fill up, once again, one of those cups that we continuously talk about in these analysis videos. I say this pretty often, especially with more advanced graffiti arts, but once you become advanced, you have to really start thinking about your 3D even before you start your letter. If you can think about your 3D before you've even started your piece, then you'll enter this really, really efficient cycle of your letter structures dictating your 3D and your 3D kind of dictating your letter structures at the same time. So does, whether he thought about it or not, had one point perspective going underneath his letters, which is going to cause his 3D to go downwards. And he uses a lot of his letter structures and extensions in order to exemplify and augment that 3D, in order to enhance the depth of this piece. Not only that, but returning back to the O, because of how the O is positioned and structured, it's not going to be able to have any 3D fill in that top portion, which once again leads us right back to him including that top portion of the O in order to fill in that negative space. Now what I really like here is the way he transitions from line uniformity and similarity into momentum flow in a very smooth fashion that you may not catch immediately. But it certainly works and it's part of the reason why this piece flows so smoothly. You see he has this extension on the D that goes in this angle right here. And that's obviously replicated here along the top portion of the D as well. Which immediately goes right into the O with line uniformity and similarity directly leading us into the E's extension which has once again line uniformity and similarity. Now it's at this point where it changes from line uniformity and similarity and some momentum flow because it's right here where the uniform and similar lines can be traced directly into this extension from the E right into the bottom portion of the S and not only throughout the S but also through the extension of the S and then he ties it all back into one another really really smoothly because you can see that same extension on the S done on the D so now it has letter uniformity so really what he just did here was connect letter uniformity into line uniformity then into momentum flow back into letter uniformity, which is really, really genius. That's really, really smart. Now, one thing I love about Does's work is he leaves a lot of gaps for negative space. Similar to Rhyme's work, where they'll intentionally leave these gaps, and then they'll come back and fill them either with exterior details or extensions of some kind. Which is honestly a really optimal way of doing extensions because one of the properties of an extension is having a reason for your travel distance. Which, if you purposefully leave negative space open for an extension to go to, well then chances are you can find a pretty good reason for an extension to go there. And we see that happen once again, just like in the last piece at the top of the E, where he left a huge gap for negative space and he throws an extension there, but something interesting happens here. If we look, he tethers his extension with letter uniformity and similarity into the horizontal part of the E, which has an extension of its own that bridges right on top of the O and then back inwards. Now all of these lines right here have line uniformity and similarity, which just boosts flow. And it's going to once again tether the extension to the letters into the exterior details down here. Because all of those different things are made out of uniform and similar lines in a very, very cohesive 
and seemingly smooth fashion that doesn't really get obscured or distract in any way. So it's not taking away from the piece, and that's important to mention, because if you wanted to try this at home, you'd have to make sure while you do this, you're not sacrificing any of the fundamentals while you do it. I also really like this piece because he has a lot of letter uniformity and similarity. For example, if we take a look at the tops of his letters, the top of his D is not too, too different from the top of his O. It has that same kind of sweeping motion, and you can see this reflected in the E and the S as well, just inverted. Now, I like this piece a lot, not only because of the colors, but because where he chose to put the colors. That blue is beautiful. It's a really, really nice, subtle gradient that he creates with that blue, and it helps to really pop the letters off of the surface, especially considering that some of the brown within the letters doesn't really contrast much at all with the brown from the actual background. And seeing as the rest of the film is predominantly warm, it's only going to have less of a contrast because of that. But you almost don't even notice that because he does such a good job placing the colors in a way where he still manages to make the piece pop immensely. And that just goes to show you the power of understanding color theory. One of the questions I get very, very often from newer graffiti artists and even experienced graffiti artists is what color combinations go well together. And this is a perfect opportunity to go and say don't focus on necessarily color combinations, focus on the color relationships. And focus on understanding value, saturation, and actual color. Because these are the three properties of color that you're going to use in order to make your pieces pop. And it really doesn't matter what colors you throw together, as long as you understand those three things, color, value, and saturation, you can make any color combination pop. For example, you can give me just one color, and if I have a monochromatic color scheme, I can make a piece pop off the wall real easy with just that one singular color. Now, part of the reason this piece pops so well is because if you look at his 3D, it's almost pitch black. And these warmer and darker colors are going to contrast heavily against the lighter blue exterior detail directly coming in contact with that 3D. And that's how he's making the piece pop. You see, because the graffiti rests on top of the 3D. So despite having that colder background, that lighter background, the dark 3D is being pushed forward by that lighter background, and the darker 3D is further pushing the letters forward, even more so than the background was already doing. So really, the order you put your colors and where you put your colors and how much of a color you put in combination with the saturation and the value is really all you need in order to make a piece pop off of a wall or a page. Doesn't matter what surface you're doing it on. The rules still stay the same. And I think this is another great example of it with this piece here, because he has a really warm, really light background with this red here. But what does he do? He goes ahead and throws a really, really dark 3D right against that which is going to, once again, help the piece pop off of the surface. This is how he's able to have a lot of similar colors within his fill-in, and it doesn't really clash too much. Mixed on top of that, he throws in some cool colors within the fill-in in order to differentiate the different surfaces from one another, and he's off to the races. He's got a piece that's gonna jump off the wall immediately. So if we take a second to study his extensions, you'll notice they flow out of the travel distance a lot of the times. If not, they have a reason for the travel distance and or they flow at the destination. This is a great way to make your extensions not so jarring. This is a great way to make them look like it's part of the actual letter. It's a great way to make your extensions more harmonious to the actual piece piece as a whole. One really big thing I love that does does is the fact that he'll use his fill-in in order to suggest structure. Now that's something not a lot of graffiti artists do, but it's a really powerful tool because it allows you to forego doing an outline in certain areas and instead allows you to have interior detail in that areas, which can not only raise the detail in your image, making it look more complex, but it allows for various other things like opportunities for contrast or opportunities to avoid contrast, which believe it or not can actually be a good thing. It can add depth. It can do so much by suggesting a structure through your interior details. Not only that, but you can also increase flow dramatically through your interior details, where you can have your interior details have uniform and similar lines, which it stands to reason that if your interior detail is suggesting structure, then you probably have line uniformity and similarity in that area, as we can see here in his D. Now, did does sit there and analyze all these things and think about it? Maybe, maybe not. But that still doesn't change the fact that the science still applies and the science is still there. Much like, for example, you don't need to understand how your body functions and works, your organs and all that stuff just work without you having to actually think about it. But yet, a doctor understands all that stuff. And that's really no different for art in general. 
regardless of whether or not the artist understands or knows that it's happening, those things still apply. Anyway guys, that brings us to the end of this breakdown video. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comments down below and feel free to hit that like button. Also, while you're down there, who should I break down next? If you'd like, feel free to drop their Instagrams. You know, that way I have a direct link to that person. Your guys' support on this series has been absolutely insane. So, if you guys want more of this content, hitting that like button and commenting down below is really how I dictate what content to come out with. So once again, Honestly, thank you guys for the support. For those of you guys who are new here, check it out. We come out with two graffiti videos a week. This is the best place to get information about graffiti. So join the smartest graffiti community and subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time. Until then, peace.